So we gave you guys a little demo of live action. Um, obviously, we support a bunch of different capabilities like NetFlow, QoS, routing, IPSLA. I showed you some of those abilities. Um, the performance monitoring capability is the NetFlow technology. There's also the IPSLA video operation, which is part of the MediaNet tool set. And there's even a MediaNet QoS um, template that we have available for setting up a 12-class meeting net. Okay, we're going to, um, should we take some questions here, David? Yeah, let's go them. for a few of those. Okay. Uh, is this supported on new 3750s only, or this can be enabled on legacy set 3750s? Most of the platforms that um, are supported are the newer platforms, so the X, the E-Series, and then some of the older ones are not supported. So in the slides, I have a, a table there that you can look at and reference. Uh, and, and we'll also send out a copy of the slides. So look for an email from us where you can get that information so you don't have to write this stuff down. And then there's a question here about QoS. Yeah, so the question reads, since you're using QoS statements, is this configuration going to be pushable by QPM. So QPM, for those that aren't aware, that's Cisco's QoS policy manager. It's a Cisco Works uh, QoS management tool that Cisco sells. Um, QPM is capable of pushing out your class maps and policy maps. QPM is at this time does not support pushing out the um, the performance monitoring policy map types, and it certainly doesn't push out the flexible NetFlow configuration. So the only thing you're really going to be able to do with QPM is that class map configuration. Um, which which can be useful, but um, that's really only a tiny piece of the configuration that needs to happen, as you've seen in our slides here. And then the last question we see, do you know if Cisco plans to provide this flexible NetFlow feature in the LAN base code? Um, obviously, the majority of IDS access layer switches aren't running IP base or IP services due to the cost associated with that licensing. And the short answer is that, well, I guess the official answer is that I can't speak for Cisco in this regard. I, I don't know what their plans are, but just judging from what I've seen in the past regarding the licensing of these features on 3750, I would be very, very surprised if we saw this feature in the land base code. Um, they typically don't put any kind of layer three features in that land base uh, release, and this would definitely be considered that. So I wouldn't look to see this in land base um, unless some pretty big things change here with the way they are managing these products. Uh, that could happen, but um, I, I think it's pretty unlikely. And there's some more questions coming in. Go ahead, do you want to take that? Yeah, I can take a look here. Sure. Okay, so we've got a question, is live action a Cisco tool? So live action is a Cisco compatible tool. Um, it's been designed with Cisco in mind. We're also a uh, registered partner in the Cisco Developer Network program. So we're about as uh, we're about as legitimate as you could be to answer that question short of being manufactured by Cisco. So live action is not manufactured by Cisco, but we've received all the certifications and um, you know blessings from them that that we can receive at this point. Uh, next question here is in uh, in two dot one you can alert on class drops. However, it's a global alert. Can you do this on a per node basis in future versions? So Ken just showed that in the uh, custom triggers window. You can actually create alerts based on device as well as anything else that you'd like to uh, to look at there. So yeah, dig around in that uh, custom triggers view. I think you'll find everything you need right in there. Um, another question here, when uh, QPM deploys QoS, um, he says you believe it overlays all QoS configurations is 3750 NetFlow compatible with QPM and other QoS deployments. So I answered this a little bit before. Um, QPM is not going to deploy any NetFlow configuration on the 3750 or any other device for that matter. It will be able to push out class maps and policy maps, but not the policy maps that you need for this configuration. So QPM really isn't going to help you very much at all with this type of setup. Um, if you want to talk about this offline, we can pick up some of these discussions on QPM and stuff like that. I understand a few people have that stuff installed, so um, we'd be happy to uh, to look at that as well. Okay, another uh, question here. Okay, when, when will live action program run as a service? Any new version on the horizon? Yeah, incidentally, this um, version I'm 
using here is our latest version, it's version 2.2. Um, we've kind of had it in our back pocket for a little while, running through its courses. So we're going to have that available, generally available very shortly, I would say within a week or so, and that runs as a service. Um, it has multi-user access through a Java web start, so you can have multiple clients on different computers accessing a live action server that's running as a service. So all of that capability will be built into the 2.2 release and also the media net capability. So um, what we showed you today is not available in the 2.1 release, which is um, the currently shipping version, but we'll have an update shortly. And actually that kind of brings me to the next slide. So we're going to um, we're going to distribute the slide slideware in a um, email. Shortly, give you access to that through a link. Um, in that slides deck, we'll have this tape, this um, set of links here. So we'll have the Cisco release bulletin, give you some information on the performance monitoring capability as well as the release notes. There's a an action pack. Um, blog up on performance monitoring, so if you want to just go to actionpack.com slash blog, you'll see a uh, performance monitoring update there. And then we'll also have a link to the Live Action 2.2 software download for you guys to uh, to try out the MediaNet performance monitoring capability. Um, also though, as part of that, you're going to need the, uh, the iOS release, so that's not going to be out probably for at least a couple of weeks, so take note of that you won't be able to get access to that 12.258 build on um, Cisco's website just yet. So you'll have to wait a couple of weeks for that. But you can take a look at 2.2 once we send this out. Um, the other thing is uh, David's got some interesting blogs he'll be posting up on Flexible NetFlow. So Flexible NetFlow is a part of this whole performance monitoring thing. So he'll have some background information on, on how, to, how to handle the Flexible NetFlow. Any other yeah, a few other ones I've got on tap on the blogs you'll see probably in the next few weeks. Um, uh, we have a lot of customers we've worked with that have Catalyst 6500 and Cisco 7600 platforms. The QoS on those platforms is non-trivial to say the least. So I'm going to, i got another blog post in the, in the queue here, kind of demystifying all the different types of QoS that you have on that platform, when you use what kinds, uh, what our tool can help you with and kind of just demystifying all that because there's a lot of mystery around it in that in that chassis, the different uh, options that you have at your disposal. Um, also for any uh, Department of Defense customers, um, we, we actually have uh, certification from the Joint Interoperability Test Command. So if that's of interest to you, feel free to reach out. We can talk a little more about that. So we're on the approved products list there for uh, the Department, uh, the Defense Information Systems Agency, or DISA. So I'm sure that is completely irrelevant to almost everyone on this call, but <laughs> if you are in the DOD, that's like a critical thing. So we got some information coming about that also. Yeah, and then one other thing, we, um, we're going to have another webinar in a couple of weeks. We have a guest speaker from Cisco. He's a double CCIE, Amr Akhtar, and he's going to talk a little bit more about this um, media net capabilities and media net tool set, how you can leverage it, what it's used for, and we'll have a, a little bit uh, more of an expanded demo there showing the IPS LaVio capability and some more of the uh, the other media net monitoring capabilities. So look for that on the website as well. We probably can provide a link to the registration in the uh, updating email. So look for that webinar in, in a couple weeks. I wanted to thank you guys out, all out there for spending time with us on your Friday. Um, hope you guys have a, a good weekend, and um, feel free to drop us a line or visit us at our website. Take a look at some of the um, information up there, www.actionpack.com. Uh, feel free to drop us a line at info at Thanks again, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye. Cheers, guys.